Hello everybody and welcome to another Craft Ninja video. Today I'm going to show y'all how I'm going to upcycle this lovely Lazy Susan that I picked up in the Target dollar spot. It's a Lazy Susan condiment holder and so I thought it was really pretty to start off with but I thought we could add a little bit more to it. So I have some of the beautiful papers from Teresa Collins digital collection Mariposa and I printed out three of my favorite papers. I printed it out on two actually. The first one that I printed out on was just my regular printer paper which is 32 pound um, laser printer paper. Um, it did print it on my new printer um, but it seems to print out really well but then I thought it would be a little bit more fun to print on this A4 Japanese paper and I don't know if y'all can see but it does have a little bit of a texture in it so you can see that shine right there that's from the paper fibers and this paper has a smooth side and it has a more rough side and the smooth side is what I printed on and so I thought because it is slightly transparent, I don't know if y'all can see, um, yeah, it's a little bit, um, it's not totally opaque, it's a little bit transparent, it's translucent. And so I thought that that would go really well with the wood grain, just to kind of maybe pick up on a little bit more natural looking instead of all totally coated. So what I'm planning on doing is cutting these out to fit inside these sections and then accenting my the dividers with my paint pens. I pulled my white paint pen. I have a Posca one that was in my stash. You could definitely use like a Sharpie paint pen. Um, I would recommend a water-based one, so a latex paint one. You could also just use um, regular white paints and I have a gold one. So my game plan is to fill these with the paper, um, have the white um, main divider and then have gold on this inside rim. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get started and let's see how it turns out. Make sure you always shake up your paint pens. Let's see, so because this is such a fat tip and this is, it's I don't know, it's maybe an eighth of an inch. It's somewhere between an eighth and a quarter inch kind of deep here. Um, I'm going to find a piece of scrap paper to kind of go inside because the, this paper that I'm planning on using is a little translucent. I don't really want it to bleed too much um, into, this, um, into this little base. So let me go grab a sheet of scrap paper to go inside here and I'll start coloring. All right, here is my scrap sheet of paper. Let's see, let me just kind of rub this along here to kind of get the curvature of the paper. No measurements here, I know some of y'all like measurements, but this is gonna be a good enough guide. This is just a scrap sheet of paper, and then we can use the straight edges for the two straight edges, so. There we go, and then I'm just gonna slide this in here like this, maybe curve this a little bit more so I can really get into that corner. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna start in the middle and work my way out, and we'll see how it turns out. This is an experiment. I saw this, I don't know, a couple months ago at this point. It's just been sitting around waiting for me to kind of start doing this. Um, so we'll see how we'll see how this turns out and see how many coats of paint we're gonna need inside here. There we go, and I don't know if y'all can see that, but there is a little bit of gold paint in there. It's super subtle, but you know what? You'll know that it's there if you're making this, you'll know. And that's honestly what matters. Kind of shove this in the corner a little bit. Yeah, see, that's not gonna work. I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna need to cut more <laughs> paper to go in here, because I don't want it to go on the inside. We 
go and we're getting a little bit of color in there. I missed the spot right here. This is gonna take a couple coats of paint to kind of get this right. There we go. We're starting to get some color on the inside there. So that's, I'll let that dry. I'll let my templates dry. And I'm gonna start coloring this rim um, white. I would definitely um, recommend coloring with the green. There we go. Now, if you look closely, you can still see the wood grain and it kind of has a whitewashed look instead of being totally coated um, like with like an enamel paint. And so I really like that. I think that that lends to the whole kind of more, a little bit more natural um, thing because it, it is made of wood and, and I don't wanna take away too much <laughs> from it being wood. So let's see. See, let's go ahead and try to do the insides of these again because well they have dried you can see well you can see I made a boo-boo right there but I think the paper will cover it up you can see that it does need at least another coat to kind of really start showing the gold and honestly I suspect it's gonna take three or more coats inside this rim to really get like a nice gold sheen And there we go, that second coat is really getting in there and giving a much better gold sheen to that. Let me go get some more scrap paper and I'll be right back. There we go, we've got our second one filled in. That's looking really good for a second coat. I think I might do a third one, but let's move on to the last section. All right, and there is the third one done. I think that looks pretty good. I think I will go over the third time just because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, I'll admit it. Um, and that, so then, what I'm gonna do to adhere these pieces of paper inside is I'm just gonna kind of look and see kind of what works inside this and then what I'll use to stick it down is gonna be some matte medium. Um, I have this collage podge um, from Aileen's which is um, really great. You could also use um, matte medium like from Golden or Liquitex, both of those are gonna work great. Um, this, I think it'll you know, seal it up and I don't know how this is gonna, this paper's gonna react to water cause it was printed on an inkjet printer. So we shall see. I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit and then I'll come back and go over all these insides again and then I'm going to Stick these, cut these out and stick these in. Now this is Japanese, um, I think it's more rice paper than it is. Um, it has a lot of texture in it, so it's gonna be a little bit harder to cut because there's lots of fibers in this paper. And when I start cutting, y'all will see that. All right, one last happy coat of gold paint, and then we'll be on to the next step. And because it's water-based, if you get a little extra and you can catch it when it's damp, you can clean it up with a baby wipe. And just be careful not to erase all of your good work on your, where you wanted the paint. All right, there we have it. The 
inside is coated, is lined with gold. Nice even coating. I think three was kind of perfect number. And then now we're going to move on to these. All right, let's move this out of the way and let it dry completely. Let's see, I have a cutting mat. This is from the dollar store of all places. Super handy, pretty amazing. Oh my goodness, like, <laughs> wow, I can't believe you can find cutting mats at the store, at the Dollar Tree, in the like kind of craft section. Super cute. Well, not super cute, but super useful. That's for sure. Okay, so I have a metal edged ruler and I have a craft knife. I'm going to actually go change my craft knife blade because as I said in other videos, having a sharp craft knife is going to do wonders for not having to work so hard. And because I know this paper is really fibrous, I'm gonna wanna do that. So I'll be right back. And I keep my old ones in an old container, just in case, and to not be pokey when you try to go and throw them out. I also keep them in a uh, different orientation. And you can see that, look at those fibers. Those are super fun. So having a torn edge like this for like collage and stuff like that will be, would be super cute. So that's what you can use like your leftovers for, for. You don't have to toss that. That's good. That's good paper. And really a sharp craft knife makes all the difference. Since I haven't painted the outside of this, I think this will be a decent template um, to go around to make sure I get a good clean cut. Upside down. When I'm gonna use my craft knife, I'm going to run this blunt edge along the edge of this and I'm gonna angle my cutting blade just slightly away from this so I don't scratch this up. That's my <laughs> objective for this right now. We'll see if it works. I've kind of done it with other things so I didn't cut it if I didn't have a like a metal edge, but I find that that really helps. So you aren't cutting up the thing that you're trying to. And you know, I didn't get as good a cut as I wanted to, so you can always just go around again. And because your craft blade is super new, you're gonna get a really good cut. All right, that looks pretty good. I haven't rounded the edges. There we go, that looks pretty good. All right, let's move on to our next sheet. Two. There we go. Let's get our straight sides cut. This, while this curve isn't perfect, it's close enough. There we go. Look, this is coming together so nicely. Look at that. Look at that, y'all. That was looking so cute. Look how pretty that is looking, y'all. All right, we have our last one. This is one of my favorites in her collection. I just think it's the, I just think it's how the yellow or the orangey, orange and the blue kind of juxtapose against each other. It just really kind of pops. And if you can't get the corners, you can already kind of see where it needs to be cutting. So just go ahead and use your scissors. You don't need to use your craft knife for everything. 
Oh my gosh, look, that looks so good. That'll make a really great like centerpiece for your table, but we're not done yet. It looks finished, but it's not done. We need to go ahead and seal this up with some matte medium or this um, collage podge from uh, Aileen's that I have. So I'm going to take out one at a time and I'm going to coat the inside and then I'll put the paper down and then I'll put the collage podge on top to kind of seal it all in place. So let me go grab a paintbrush and we'll go ahead and start putting this, bit the finishing touches on this. Okay, I found two paintbrushes in my stash. One is a nicer paintbrush that I will definitely have to wash it afterwards. The other one is a craft um, brush or a glue brush that is super cheap and I don't care too much about. So use whatever you have. Um, you just wanna kinda get a nice even coat in there. And you know, kinda make sure that your paintbrush that's crappy doesn't shed too much. So let's get this out of here. I'm gonna start off doing this one. Let me grab a craft, let me grab a craft sheet so I don't get anything on my lovely background. I need to cover that up. Don't leave your craft knives uncovered. Bad, bad craft ninja. All right, let's get this stuff out of the way just a little bit. Sparkly sparkles, you're just gonna have to go off camera, sorry. Okay, gonna take the craft mat away. Even though it's a dollar, I don't wanna get it gross. Okay, so this is just like a silicone mat, craft mat. As you can see, it's been well used, but it'll protect your surface from, you know, whatever met, wet media you're using. So I'm going to, let's see, let me shake this up just a little bit just in case it's separated. I don't know if you need to do that necessarily. You're probably working air bubbles into it, but it just makes me feel better. Squirt a little bit in there. And I'm gonna start off using my big brush and then I will work over into the corners with a smaller brush. And I always say it's good to not put too much because it's easier to add than it is to take away glue, but you do want to get kind of a good coating underneath because you want a nice good seal and you want to be able to get rid of any air bubbles there are and you want really good adhesion on this. Okay, if you get a little um, of that matte medium on the um, on the dividers because you're going to end up we're going to end up coating everything so we're going to want to seal everything just because if this is going to be on like your dining table or something like that you just want a little bit of protection and you don't want to have to worry too much. You know what? I think this glue brush is actually going to be good for everything. I don't think I'm going to need my smaller, nicer brush. And the spinny is just makes it easier just to get into all those little corners. Huh? Oh my goodness. So much fun. Spin. Make sure you get in those corners really well because that's where things can start coming up. Okay. All right. Moment of truth. Let's put the first one in. Once you stick it down, it's most likely just gonna stay and not gonna wanna come up. So if you have a bone folder or kind of like the back of a pen, kind of get all the way in those sides. Put your fingernails in your corners, use everything as a tool. Let's so have a little bit of a baby wipe over here. I'm gonna put that right there and wipe that off. There we go. That is nicely down in there. Just kind of rub my finger over the whole surface just to make sure I get everything nice and flat. I know it's easy to kind of rush things at this point because you're so excited that it's gonna get done but really taking the time to do every step nice and neatly, you'll end up with a product that you're going to be super happy with. So let's go ahead and put this on top. And since I just got a, a uh, inkjet printer, we'll see how well this reacts with a wet media. Just as long as I probably don't scrub my brush over it too much, it'll probably be fine. 
Oh, it is picking up a little bit of that pink. And... Well, we'll work in small sections. Because it is activating that ink. Another reason why you do want to seal this is because you don't want, um, you don't want the, you don't want it to leak onto anything that you have. Here we go. Okay, well that's kind of covered. When we come over and do a second coat, it'll probably smooth out a little bit and it'll dry and you won't be able to see the brush strokes. That's one of the reasons why using a kind of crappy brush isn't the best because you can kind of see the brush strokes. And so let's go ahead and um, move on. There we go. All right, let's do this one. Let's get this one in there. Honestly, I think if you use, um, if you use like a fixative or something like that, like you would do for like a charcoal drawing or something, that probably would help if you just took it outside and sprayed fixative on the paper, but I didn't do that. You know what I will do since I am having that issue? I think I have some fixative kicking around. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere the second one and then I'll fix with, um, this is in a spray can, I'll fix these two with the fixative and then I'll do um, the decoupage coating on top because it won't be completely sealed. All right, there we go. I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll try to figure out a solution for the inkjet printer ink running. All right, y'all, so I went to go try to find my fixative and I can't find my fixative, so plan B. I'd mask this off all nicely so I could just do a quick spritz, but that's not gonna work. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a foam brush and put some of the matte medium on it and then dab it in here. Um, careful not, care, being careful not to um, kind of move it around too much so I don't move the ink around on the paper. So we'll see how well that turns out. This actually turned out really well. You can't really tell that um, the ink ran a little bit. I think it did get just a little bit fuzzy, but that's okay because I don't think that y'all can tell in the video, but if you look really closely, like right here, just got a little bit fuzzy. I think from the moisture of the, of the um, decoupage. So I'm going to squirt some of this out on my craft mat. And I'm going to get this on my foam brush kind of evenly and then I'm going to kind of dab in to try to seal it up. And I think that's going to, the foam brush does tend to suck up you know, whatever paint or whatever you have. So there is going to be some waste on that, but I think that that will be worth it um, for the end result. So if you are gonna do brush strokes of this, just really kind of quick ones. And then we can always do a second coat once this first one is sealed. And then you just wanna kind of turn it around to kind of make sure that you see shininess in all of the areas, taking care to kind of get the edges. There you go, and it's gonna look a little off-white um, because 
when it's wet, but it will dry clear as you can see by this and you can't see the brush strokes on this. So that's not gonna be a big deal. So moving on to the second one. I'm gonna need more decoupage. And just make sure you kind of evenly load up your foam brush so that you're making the most out of all of your strokes. And of course you can do this with any paper. You could even do this with scrap of paper that you have in your stash. This is not limited to just printing off a digital collection or anything like that. Um, really any paper. You could even use like tissue paper, I think. Um, that would be kind of hard to deal with just because it tends to wrinkle a lot, but that would be a really cool effect being kind of transparent on top of the wood grain. I think that would be really pretty as well, depending on what kind of aesthetic you're going for. There we go. I don't want to do too much because I can definitely see the blue ink um, kind of coming up a little bit so there we go we have those two now once um once I came back to this I did notice that the white wasn't quite as white as I wanted to I thought I wanted a more whitewashed but I think if I go over this again with my white pen um, I'm gonna get a more saturated white but I'm still gonna be able to see a little bit of the wood grain so I'm gonna go over that since the what we did was inside the wells and so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and I think one of the reasons why I want to redo this again is the gold paint just kind of crept in a little bit um, just because the wood wicks the paint and so it looks faintly yellow at the edges so going over this again with your white pen is going to clean up those edges and give you a nice um, stark contrast with the with the outline and then uh, what's going on inside the wells. There we go. I've got my dividers um, repainted white. I have everything sealed and drying. So I'm going to let this dry and I will come back um, in probably about an hour to see how everything is going and potentially put a second coat on this. I'm going to clean up my matte medium from my mat and rinse out my foam brush and I'll be back in a little bit. All right, y'all, the decoupage has dried and it is looking good. So now we have the sides to worry about. I think I'm just gonna continue with the white paint pen on the side. So let me just do that. Then I'll give it one other coat of the matte decoupage and then the project will be done. All right, we'll let this dry for a little bit and see how it turns out. Some of this um, wood is actually <clears throat> melamine, which is this, um, not melamine, a chipboard sort of, it's a composite, um, but some of this is actual real wood. So we'll see how the, um, oh, I guess it's melamine, I don't know, chipboard, whatever, some composite board, we'll see how that takes the white paint and we might need not need to do a second coat since the fibers are so close together for it we might not need a second coat but i might want one so let's just let this dry and um, come back to it in i don't know about 15 minutes all right so i think this edge is going to need one more coat 
Um, I don't know if y'all can see, but I think it's just a little patchy. So I'm gonna go around it one more time, then I'll seal it and then we'll be done. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and start sealing the rest of this. Cause I think we're good to go. And probably by the time I can get ready for the sides, it'll be dry enough that we can go ahead and put a top coat on. So I really liked using my foam brush. So I'm going to continue to use that in this project instead of my scraggly glue brush. All right, there we go. All that's left to do is let it dry, clean up my area, and then it'll be ready to decorate my space. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on all things social. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye!